I have a certain philosophy when it comes to testing. This philosophy is I tend to jump to the two extremes on the spectrum for the topic I'm looking at. In a recent video, I said that you should always put your printer on the most stable platform available. The problem with making videos is it's incredibly easy to say something and not check your bias. And today, it's more important than ever that the things that we say have value and meaning to them. Now we could do a bunch of testing and I could show you a bunch of arbitrary graphs, but the truth is that the human brain doesn't work this way. And this is one of the reasons that this method for testing is one of the best that I've ever found. So let's talk about these extremes. For printer placement, the most stable platform that you could put a printer on would be something like a concrete floor. And for the most extreme and unstable placement for a printer, well, that's quite obvious. We just hang it from the ceiling. Now, all we have to do is run some quick input shaping for bolt positions and then run our test prints. But nobody is going to have the perfect printing environment, so why don't we throw in some of the worst variables we can while we're at it? Something like no-name filament that's been sitting unboxed in the studio for the past two years. But listen, we both know that the printer sitting on the concrete floor with the input shaping is going to spit out the best print that it can with this filament. So there's really no reason to waste your time, but I made sure to record this footage anyways. But just for posterity, I went ahead and threw a few other tests in there as well. I made sure to put the printer on one of those Ikea end tables, as well as a print farm rack. And then the last test I did, I put it on a solid workbench. But as garbage as this filament is, I could take these test prints and place them in front of the camera on the bar, and you'd be hard pressed to tell me which one came from which placement of the printer. But remember, this testing methodology is about extremes. As literal garbage as these test prints are, you'd be hard pressed to tell the difference between them. And I made sure to throw the worst filament at this printer that I had in the studio. Honestly, none of these look great, but that's not the point. The point was the difference in quality. But why don't we take it a step further? How about this time we go for quality? Now printing something like a cube doesn't really tell us anything about a suspended 3D printer, as the kinematics of the system really aren't doing as much work as they normally would. So why don't we throw something a little more realistic at it and really get the kinematics of the system moving. The goal is to get as much motion into our kinematic system as possible, so we can ensure that our 3D printer is in the most unstable printing conditions possible. Now I've seen all sorts of crazy things that people do with their 3D printers to help stabilize them for higher quality printing. Looking online, you'll see all sorts of things that people have come up with, from concrete pads to rubber feet to rubber pads to even specialist devices like the hula feet. Just recently, I had a viewer email me about the modifications he made to make his printer as stable as possible. And while I really appreciate the effort for chasing higher quality printing, it really got me thinking, is any of this necessary? The quality of this print isn't 100% perfect, but it looks way better than most people would have expected from the conditions it was printing in. And honestly, I've seen people brag about way worse quality on fully modded out printers with hours of tuning and calibration. But sometimes, the more we ask questions, the more questions we have to ask. Is this really the case of input shaping? Or are the kinematics of the Core XY format just this stable? So why don't we run one more test? One with input shaping on, and another with input shaping off. 
Here are the results from our new test with input shaping off and one with input shaping on. Now, we could see with this test that the one with input shaping off definitely struggled with quality a little bit more than with input shaping on. But even with this slight drop in quality, it's incredibly impressive that the FlashForge is able to print under these conditions at all. Running with input shaping off, this model here is some of the worst of the worst variables we could throw at the Adventure 5M. With minimal surface area for bed adhesion, severe overhangs, floating regions, and all printed with zero supports without input shaping. Realistically, it's a miracle that this file printed at all. But I believe there are three things happening here. The first thing that's happening is we know from testing both extremes of the spectrum that input shaping is in fact having a noticeable difference on our quality. The second thing that's going on here is the kinematic system of the Core XY format seems to be a more stable kinematic system as compared to older formats in the 3D printing space. And lastly, I believe it comes down to the printer itself. This Adventure 5M is nearing almost 6,000 hours over the last year of 3D printing. And worst of all, this machine has had zero maintenance with virtually no tuning done to it using the stock FlashForge profiles. For all practical purposes, this test across the board should have been a complete fail. And I'm not sure what it has to do with more, the Core XY format overall, or the fact that the Adventure 5M from FlashForge is just a well-built machine with a solid steel frame. And we've already shown that even with input shaping off, the printer is still able to print out the basic rough geometry of the file that you're inputting into your slicer. Realistically, these are not the results that I expected coming into this. So, should you put your printer on the most stable platform available to you? I would say the answer is still yes, but if you have a problem or can't do something like that, as long as you're somewhere in the middle, then you should be just fine. As long as you treat your printer well, it will most likely treat you the same. So I wouldn't worry about it too much.